guys, I finally got a little chance to edit some video. I, I'll explain kind of what's going, been going on with my work here in the next few weeks once we have an announcement ready. But had some changes going on, all good stuff. But last week I posted just a little bit of the video of the day I spent with Brian a week or so ago. And uh, today we're going to basically start over from the beginning of that video. So this is us. Brian had said that really the bite we wanted to do was up in the day. He said it really didn't start till about 1030. But he thought he knew, well, he knew where there had been a pretty good brim spawn going on. But he told me, he said, it's right at the tail end of it and it may be done. Do you want to get up and run up there? And I said, you know what, if I got a day to be on the water, let's go up there. Because he said if it's still going on, it's a pretty good bite. And uh, it, it wasn't. So we ran up here. We're going to fish around just a little bit, catch a couple of little fish. Beautiful, uh, about a three-quarter moon there, uh, right at daylight. We're going up the ash arm. If you guys know Raven, probably can tell kind of where we're going. And uh, we're going to run up here, fish around a little bit, and then we're going to get out deep. And Brian's going to shed some light on some stuff I think you're really going to enjoy. So here we go, guys. Good morning. Welcome to Sam Rayburn. That's right. That's my first bite of the morning, and as I was reeling it in before I dropped him, that little dude, another one tried to take the bait away from him. But ah, it, he self released. Got here with Mr. Branham this morning. We'll do a proper introduction in a minute once we're through catching all these millions of fish we're going to catch. Yeah. But, uh, got a chance to come down oh, for no, a couple no, days. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Professional guy, Brian Branham, oh, no. is measuring his line. No, what an F minus. Yes, I love seeing that. He oh, does it every God. day. You know what? Everybody gets excited. I just pulled a big one right there. Stay tuned, boys and girls. So we banged around shallow just for a little while, and I caught up several little bitty fish, but I wanted to really get out and get a better understanding of what Brian's looking for and looking at. And so we idled quite a bit before we settled down and started fishing. So this is a, a little shallow spot. I say shallow spot. A uh, little point that runs from about 12 to about 30 feet. And uh, he catches one here, and then uh, I'm going to show you all some stuff that he talked about that I found pretty fascinating as we were idling around. Hey, you know what? I think I've got another rough fish. Brian Branham. No, it's not moving at all. It's something else. Not Oh, look at this one, Brian. That's a nice one. You know what? That would have been hot. That's a petrified fish. Right there, Isn't that Brian. pretty? You want to take it home? It'd be a beautiful. You want to take that home? Make with a mouth. Ash, you make want to put the live well? Okay, I would not have done that. We're not Brian and I not good friends for a really long time. But in fairness to him, he did call pretty quick. It ain't a fish, but thought that was pretty funny so this is kind of uh, how the morning went when we first moved out deep catching lots and lots of little fish and uh, I actually had a camera set on time lapse if you know what that does it looks just like this so I thought I would just share this with you so we we're just sort of out there banging around and, and one thing I'll tell you you'll notice Brian set up right on the seat I told Brian when we got there I said look I'm not here to catch fish I'm here to observe how you pursue these fish and how you present your bait to these fish. I said, don't worry about me. I'm here to watch and film. And that's why he just got right there in the middle and went and did his thing. And that's exactly what I asked him to do. Now, later in the day, you're going to see I do get up here and I catch some fish in front of him. But 
I wanted to understand for somebody who does this, you know, 100 days a year, so far this year, halfway into the year, what he's doing. And uh, we've done this, so we've caught a bunch of fish, you know, pretty quicker. This is probably before 11. So now we're going to pick up right where we ended last week with Brian out there showing us exactly what he's doing and me holding the camera. You see the jig gate on this side of the crop. It's falling, 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 falling. I don't really want it to go down there in that haze very far because that's kind of a junky area. It's a, it's a nighttime plankton layer or something. And as the sun comes up, it gets deeper. The fish generally aren't in it because it's kind of junky. There's one out there at about 70 that might be a largemouth. It doesn't really have the best signature for a largemouth. A largemouth, the most classic largemouth signature is going to be a little bit different than that. That one's kind of rounded. Guys, a quick cutaway here. And by the way, it's not Brian's unit that's flashing. When you put a unit, uh, a replay in slow motion, this starts happening. So that's what you're seeing here. What Brian's talking about is you see, so that's 34 feet of water, and you see down there about 26, 27 feet. It it looks cloudy from there below, and that's what he's describing. He's going to talk about this more later in this video. What he describes, can't talk. What he describes basically is kind of a plankton bloom, and his experience, and he'll talk about why that is, but his experience tells him that. Those fish, they might dart down there in that space, but that's a really uncomfortable space for them. So they don't generally spend much time. And you heard him say earlier in the video, or maybe he just said it, that that actually, as the sun gets higher, that drops lower in the water column. So it gets deeper and deeper, kind of gives those fish a bigger space to roam around in. So I thought that was interesting, and I wanted to make sure I could show you all on a little bit of a close-up exactly what that looks like right there. It's kind of rounded and fuzzy and rounded and fuzzy can be shad or another type of fish real easily bass usually have a certain look that once you see them it reminds you every time man there's what it looks like see we're in 35 foot of water i just noticed i'm not even looking at that i'm just looking at the upper water column for what i'm after and if there's fish that have come off of this point and they're wandering around eating shad they're real easy to catch in general it's just cast accuracy and patience. I really don't see any doing what I want. There's some down there at a reasonable depth. And you got to pay attention to not let this happen. Let me give everybody a tip here. When you have something like this happen on your spinning rod, the best way to take that out is not just start pulling it off the front of your spinning reel. Undo your drag all the way and undo it this way. Don't undo it where you pull everything over the top if you do you'll end up with three strands of line that are really long and all hanging out you want to you want to do it like that this one is a little bit different where i may <laughs> you're trying to display a technique for you and here it's gotten kind of messed up but generally you want to take your bad spots off of your spinning reel when you see a loop on there by pulling against the drag and then not ending up with this which i was a little bit late on the draw so i'm gonna have to do it to some extent um I pulled all of that line out with three leads the whole time. He saved it, believe it or not. <laughs> it was an hour ago when he started doing it, it but he saved it. An hour ago, but that is, it's still, there's only one way to save it sometimes. Still, still seven dollars worth of line, yeah. If you if you pull against the drag, you're way better off. Now I'll get ready to pick up the motor, and change the door, and pop. But the one thing I'm going to do first is look back around this drop and see if a big one has pulled up in the shad to feed because it's a different way of fishing. And if you turn it off at the, at the wrong time, those look like bass at mm -hmm. 65. Do you have your transducer tilted up a little bit? 
Those fish should come right to that though if they're active bass. No. And instead, look what they did. Some small ones staying with it a little bit. I usually don't do what I'm doing right now if fish scare like that. Um, I usually just consider them not a target, but they were very convincing, so I'm going to take a look real quick again. If they're in the center of the water column. Brian, you're running two separate garments on the front. Are they the same unit? No, they're actually, um, one of these is a 8612, whole school of small fish. Um, the other one is a 126SX. The one on the bottom is networked to both of the dash units. The one on the top is a standalone scope. It's got a little bit higher resolution than the one down here. Is that why you go to the 8600 series? That and it has a faster processor. Um, this is a 1900 by 1200 pixels. 1900 little dots across here making up the picture. 1220 making up the picture this way. So 1900 times 1220 is how many pixels are on that screen. This one is somewhere around 1200 by 800 or 900. And there's about a four times difference in, in the number of pixels yeah. there than in there. Both of them are excellent screens. The 126 is a beautiful screen. Um, it will show the same thing. Basically, is what I'm looking at there. It's just this one has more resolution, is a little bit faster. Um, I prefer it over that one. I've used both. All right, don't pull. I want you to show me something. I interchange them constantly. Um, All right, so you made a comment earlier, and I've heard you talk about this before. And, and I know you learned this from Driscoll. So talk about thermocline versus what you're seeing right there. Well, right now we don't have a, it's kind of funny to me, the, the thermocline in this lake right now is between 25 and 28 feet. You can see it plain as day right there. Just plain as day. It's 25 to 28. All right, point to it. Show guys what we're it's talking this about. Much, it's this line of, of, of activity. Now, above that is a strange phenomenon, in my opinion. It's, cha it's changing daily, and it's coming to a close, finally, where the water is stratifying or leveling out. But you see all this? This has been around for about a month. Those are little bitty minnows, and then when you go by, if it's real bright daylight, and you're out in the middle of the lake, you can see the cloud of them. They're just right there, two feet under. They are part of, they're a big part of my fishing right now. As the day continues, if you're watching the show and you watch the, all of it, you will probably see a phenomenal meaning to this upper part here. Because we'll get in the lake in some places where the fish are completely acclimated to 25 feet of water, 22 to 28 feet of water. That means that, that means that they're, air bladders are conditioned to be in that depth um, they're sub substantially full to accommodate neutral buoyancy at 25 feet so they're most comfortable there they don't have any pressure pulling on them and they don't have any pressure pushing on them as long as they don't go up or down if they go down they'll have more pressure pushing they'll feel pressure and if they go up they'll feel negative pressure either one is bad Okay, right there, I want to be sure. I don't want to cast for no reason. At the top here, you see a fish feeding on the top. Now, I'll tell you something that's related to what we just said. Now, a fish like that, in all likelihood, came up from 25 feet, since he's just out here over the river and sitting there, he came up most likely when he was in 25 foot, so he's up there just to feed. Ooh, went right by him. Yeah, that, that might have been a non-bass. It can be a turtle. 
which they suspend just under the surface all the time. The biggest thing I get fooled by is turtles and gar. That one right there, it must be a turtle. Because, I mean, it's just simply not paying any attention at all to that. A bass would run away, a rough fish would run away. I bet you we see a turtle surface right here. They'll hang around those shad. Birds eat those shad. Other fish feed on those shad and create little particles. And the turtle couldn't catch a shad. It was life depended on it, unless it was hurt, dying, dead, whatever. Um, so turtles are a huge indication of fish activity below the surface, primarily because look at these fish out here. They're just right over the river channel edge down on the thermocline. I mean, those can be bass. They can be white, fit, white bass or whatever. I'm not concentrating on those fish in this environment. I'm looking for fish that are up here. If you see all those fish on the top, they're not acclimated to deep water. They're really small bait. They're about that big. They spit them up in the boat all the time, so I see them. They're, they're three quarter to an inch and a half long fry of some type. I have asked Todd what is all over the lake in the first five feet of the lake, no matter where I go. He said some kind of very successful spawn of shad um, or brim or white bass or something because I've seen some of these fish and they are not threadfin shad. They're tall and pretty and long and fat. They're little bitty skinny minnow type lures. They look like crappie minnows or something. So um, they could be tiny gar. They could be the fry stage of almost any fish on the lake. But there's a million of them. It's unusual. This year's unusual. Um, it right. must have something to do with the water level and how much grass we have right now because those are the only things that are different from last year at this time is how much grass is in the lake. All right, so you didn't go where I thought you would go. Okay. So, Mike.